say tomorrow no nope. okay first game's on me can we play doubles we're on the same team we're always on the same team good evening our lead story kevin flynn was reported missing the visionary icon and ncom ceo skyrocketed to the top of the tech industry he was last seen at home with his son sam leaving behind an empire and a now orphan little boy Sam, I was Paige last night. Paige came from your dad's office at the arcade. Alan, you're acting like I'm gonna find him sitting there working. Where am I? Possibility. It's incredible. More beautiful than I ever dreamed. And more dangerous than I ever imagined. What happened? My creation turned against me. Heaven Flynn! Where are you now? What am I supposed to do? Survive. We have to get you out of here. Out there! There's a new world! Here they come! Out there! Yeah! Here's our destiny. So before I would like to ask you, this is only the 2D version, and <laughs> I think the full experience is the 3D version, and some of you registered, um, we are inviting to see that tonight. And, but I'd like to ask you now, Daniel Simon, who is the, you're the chief designer, so to uh, say, no, of, that's not, no, that's not too much, yeah. you're a key designer. You're the vehicle concept designer of, of Tron, and my question to you is, and, and you, you extend on that a little bit later. As a designer um, working on a movie like John, how would you describe that? And how does it connect to uh, the work you do? And you show us some of the um, images uh, of, of your further work. How, explain a little bit to us what is special and, and what we can learn from that. Um. And I was called in for Tron because they were looking for specialists from architecture, fashion, and vehicle design. Um, so for me, it was the first movie I ever worked on, and then this super big project. But they were really looking for specialists of every field. Um, time was a constraint, although I, I worked on about 10 vehicles in 12 months. Uh, vehicle design before was, for Volkswagen, was maybe one vehicle a year. Pressure's really high. The, um, the screen is... Uh, um, the screenplay is changing all the time. We never know what actors are casted in the beginning. So it's, it's really hard. You have to be really adaptive and really fast. Um, we, when we start and we read the script, we actually start with pencils on paper, totally old school, like, you know, mm -hmm. like artists, we, the artists we want to be. But real quickly, we start with 3D. I don't even really know what slides we have here now. But uh, this is also a totally old school pencil drawing, one of the final ones of the hero light cycle we have right now. Uh, it's a mix of pencil and Photoshop. It's, it's a beautiful challenge to mix all these different technologies. Um, and uh, let's see what we have here. But it goes also like super low tech. Uh, two weeks after I started, my art directors built a light cycle out of plumbing so we can actually check the proportions and the, the, how the actor later will, uh, will be sitting on. Like two seconds later, I'm actually falling off and look like a like a stupid bike rider, but that's fortunately not on the picture. Um, 
that helped us a lot to find the right proportion and setup. Um, as a designer, I work a lot in 3D software. I learned this in the car industry. I'm using Autodesk Alias. It's not appropriate in the film industry. They work more in po polygon modeling, like Maya. Uh, this is a NURBS modeling software, but that helped us to send my data directly to prototyping. And they, um, by the way, this poly figure here on it is a digital scan of Garrett Hedlund. So I modeled the, I modeled the bike exactly about him, the main actor. If they had casted another one, uh, that would have been a little problem. And the final film, only his head is real. The rest of his body is a digital figure rendered by Digital Domain, the effect house that was founded by James Cameron and now run by uh, Michael Bay. Uh, we went so into detail on this film that was like totally ridiculous. It never really happens in Hollywood. <clears throat> Even the engine that you see in the light cycle, maybe one or two seconds, uh, I spend a day or two to define really what parts move how, because I never really knew how long the director, Joe Kaczynski, will have this on screen. And yeah, he's a designer, he's an architect himself, the director, so uh, for all of us it was really exciting. This, just to give you an idea, is one of the cockpits we have, and even there, for the actors, I had to prepare... Oh. Can we, can we see the slide, the other one again? Even for the actors, I had to prepare schemes where they can say uh, in the filming then, okay, when you say bank the plane to the left, they ex exactly know what to do, or can you drop some whatever rockets? It's Hollywood. Um, they know exactly what button to press. And there's also a certain continuity, because if they shoot it again and again and again, so they do always the same moves. And for me, it's very impressive because in the end, it's two hours, and we worked on it like for so long and thought about so many things. And I always say it's just a second on screen, but it's for eternity because, oh yeah, I hope still in 20 years some kids grab that out of a dusty Blu-ray shelf. They will not even know what a Blu-ray is by then anymore, but, um, and it's still holding up by its beauty. Um, this was a key rendering I did of the bike. Um, I took my weekend off and spent a little time on finishing something because there's never, ever time. Um, I, I rendered this in Maya with uh, iRay technology and photoshopped some atmosphere over it. It's an HDR-lit 3D model, so the atmosphere you see reflecting in the glossy surfaces comes from HDRI lighting. And uh, yeah, Disney jumped on that image and used it in the early PR procedure because there's never really imagery you can use. If I talk too much, you just slap my, slap my hand. Is it interesting? Uh, yeah, okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Disney's here, I, I shouldn't say that, but this is much more, of course, this is much more interesting than a movie, but this is off the record. Um, no, the movie is amazing. It was actually the first time that me as an artist saw something finished where I say, oh my God, this is, this is freaking, can I say freaking awesome here? Um, to, to be just so proud of it. Because an art, as an artist, you're never happy with a final result. It's always compromised, but here we just did what we could do. Um, can we run that film real quick, the other one? Um, oh, it's the clock off already? Hmm? Do we have two more minutes? I think we have two more minutes. Okay. Sure. Uh, we even went so far to design the whole inside of the bike. You see that probably for 0 0.2 seconds in the film. But again, we didn't know how often they show this, so I went in and uh, um, created the frame, kind of a m magical engine. It's all, I think on Tron we called it a blend of mysterious mechanical fantasy and technical reality. So for a second you should believe it works, but it doesn't really, of course. Uh, next slide is where we at night also just build a full-size replica for the Comic-Con fans. It's the biggest uh, comic show in um, San Diego. It's on a platform now to announce big Hollywood movies. And yeah, fans go nuts about these two uh, full-size replicas. And they make more miles than any other frequent flyer. Uh, they, they just had this in Berlin on, what was it, Friday? Kind of losing concept of time lately. Um, it was a fantastic premiere in, uh, in Berlin, by the way, with the Michalski fashion show. It was amazing. There's another quick render done in a bunk speed software. Um, it's called Shot, uh, <clears throat> which always helps us. We can rotate this on my computer when I work in, in a 360 always, and the director can get certain ideas uh, from where he wants to shoot it. 
And um, this is another example where we have an interior on this bike, and in the film, this vehicle is completely CG, but the actor has a certain backlit situation in his face, so we built the cockpit of that very bike we just saw for real. Um, every switch is designed in the film. We didn't steal anything from the, uh, you know, how do you say, scrapyard or uh, a car dealership. Um, and again, as a designer, it's the most fascinating thing to just design everything from scratch. Uh, this is the interior of the car. Uh, we have a gas pedal, we have a brake pedal, it's kind of weird, but Tron is a simulation of reality. It's not the future, it's really important. Mm, and the center console looks a little bit like a Bugatti Veyron, and that's because I had no time to design something. <laughs> so I just stole something I did for two years before. Don't tell my boss. And um, one of the cool jets, but I hope this surprise in the end. And can we run this last movie again? It's uh, one of the cars. And it should be an appetizer to Tron, what we showed to you, and actually to yes. learn more about it. And also. And that's uh, one of the cars yes. I designed. And it's, uh, again, a headache to do a car in a few weeks, because normally it takes years to do. So yeah, yeah. we all hope you guys like it. And there's more than cars. There's costumes and music, Daft Punk. It's like going to a rock concert. It's pretty awesome. And I have to say, visit the website uh, of, of Daniel Simon. He has spectacular further designs on cars and moving vehicles on. It's really it's great, and it has elegance also. I felt very oh, much thank looking you. at that. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So thank you, thank you. for coming over. <laughs> it's good. <laughs>